I really didn't know the questions to ask. I was uneducated, I guess, and, and a little bit um, naive, like I said, to whenever I got the prescription, how quickly I became physically addicted. I'd never experienced a drug where within such a short amount of time, it was weeks, it became all consuming. The most important thing, I think, in that situation is to have an open and respectful conversation. An individual who's abusing these medications is typically not trying to do so. They're not trying to trick us. So what you have to do is you have to be respectful and yet forceful to say, now's my job, I need to step in for you to keep you safe. One of the most difficult conversations a healthcare provider may have is in regards to decreasing or eliminating a patient's use of opioids. A patient might cry or yell, or even accuse the provider of not caring about them. The conversation can be completely deflating, but it's also one of the most important discussions to have with a patient for the sake of their well-being. On a scale of zero to 10, 10 being the worst, how would you describe the pain? Probably an eight. As far as my general activity, well, the pain makes it hard to get the job done at work. We can try an opioid at a low dose, but it's very important to understand the risks. Everything from uh, constipation to addiction and overdose, even fatal overdose. When opioids are used, they work better when they're used with other treatments like exercise. Well, I wanna check back in three weeks and see if you're meeting your goals for pain and function. How are you doing? Pretty good. <laughs> I can even pick up my eldest granddaughter now. Doctor, thanks for seeing me. I think I need to fill my medication early. Sometimes it can be difficult controlling how much medication you're taking for pain. So let's talk about medication and lifestyle changes to help you meet your treatment goals. It is common for the provider or healthcare team to experience challenging conversations with patients as safety guidelines in the area of chronic pain and prescription opioids are implemented. Some topics that may elicit fear in patients and potentially cause discord include discussing controlled substance client clinic agreements, discussing community, state, and national guidelines for safe prescribing practices, informing new patients that opioids or other controlled substances will not be prescribed and or increased, informing patients that opioids will be discontinued and or tapered, discussing the dangers and side effects of the medication. It is understandable and predictable for patients to express strong feelings when they're presented with information such as the need to reduce or eliminate opioids. Opioid medications can become a patient's primary coping strategy for dealing with physical, emotional, psychological, and post-traumatic pain. Delivering a message about reducing or stopping such medications can be triggering and even terrifying for a patient and the patient's family. In such situations, patients' emotions are commonly first expressed in the form of anger directed toward the prescribing provider and healthcare team. When facing a highly emotional patient, it is helpful to consider what may be underlying the strong emotional expression. Often underneath the heightened emotional response, such as anger, there is fear, grief, panic, sadness, or a belief that living without prescription opioids is impossible. Being curious and understanding what may be beneath a highly emotional expression does not mean one should not take action in the service of safety. However, treading lightly and following the recommendations will make for a more positive outcome. Remember, patients genuinely do not initially understand the rationale for tapering or removing opioids when appropriate. They also do not set out to develop problematic use patterns. Let's start with value identification. Prior to engaging in potentially challenging conversations, it is advisable to spend time reflecting on the core values and principles that you are upholding in the difficult conversation. For example, it may be in the service of practicing safe medicine, being in alignment with your colleagues, the medical board or community, state, and national safe opioid prescribing guidelines. When you are in alignment with your values and the healthcare team believes that the change is in the patient's best interest, the difficult conversations are often more manageable and rewarding. When asking a patient to do something they may be afraid to do or that they do not want to do, they may leave the appointment highly distressed, very angry, or even inconsolably sad. 
it is common for providers and the healthcare team to feel that if a patient leaves in such a highly agitated state, the outcome of the appointment was a failure. Reconsider this belief. When a provider or healthcare team member asks a patient to make a change that is guided by core principles and values and a belief that it is in the patient's best interest to make the change, then the state the patient is leaving in can be considered a natural part of the patient's therapeutic process. This is also a positive step toward the individual's overall health and well-being. Difficult conversations often bring about discomfort for patients, their families, providers, and healthcare team members. When we model our willingness to be uncomfortable to our patients, it helps the process. Consider saying to yourself before engaging in such a conversation, I am willing to be uncomfortable having this conversation because it is in the service of my value of safety and best practice medicine. It can be helpful to notice your own sympathetic nervous system activation, such as rapid, shallow breathing, clenching fists or jaw, and then engage in an activity to activate your parasympathetic nervous system, such as slowing down your exhale or softening your hands or jaw. Just as these situations can be highly triggering for our patients, they can be highly triggering for providers and the healthcare team as well. These conversations go more smoothly when providers or healthcare team members can identify which types of patients and situations trigger them the most and develop an intervention strategy to notice the trigger and proceed calmly and effectively with delivering effective patient care. It is important not to underestimate the relationship between the patient and the provider or healthcare team as a resource. Most patients genuinely care for their providers or healthcare team and want to work collaboratively with them. Often, genuinely communicating with patients that you will stick by their side through the changes can be one of the most powerful tools. Patients often fear their providers or healthcare team will abandon them, ask them to make changes too quickly, not listen to their fears, or fire them from their practice. Proactively quashing such fears and acknowledging that the fear is real to them will go a long way toward reducing them. Just giving them the confidence, the self-efficacy that this is something you can do and this is in your best interest. Here's your goals you want for your life. Here's what you're doing right now and let's get to that goal that you want by changing these behaviors. Expressing the belief in the patient's ability to make the change is one of the most valuable tools for creating positive clinical outcomes, such as removing or reducing opioids. You may think the patient knows this. However, it is highly advisable to overtly tell the patient, even over multiple appointments, and even if it feels redundant or if you don't completely believe that your patient will be able to make such changes. Believing the patient can change is critical to the success of the process. Over time, as you see your patient making such changes and actually increasing functioning and quality of life, you will be more confident in your patient's abilities and it will be easier to relay your belief in them. Development of a treatment relationship in which patients are active collaborators in the process is an important component in making changes. Motivational interviewing, or MI, provides a basic foundation for engagement in treatment and commitment to making changes. The tenets of MI include empathy, develop discrepancies between present behavior and desired behavior, avoiding argumentation, rolling with patient's resistance, and promotion of self-efficacy. This belief is that the patient has the capacity to make change and the responsibility for their quality of life. The stages of change serve as a guide to the intervention. The spirit of MI includes collaboration, evocation, drawing the patient out, and promotion of autonomy. Confrontation, education, and authority are not considered part of motivational interviewing. The patient will naturally feel, feel that you might be an adversary. You're the obstacle to getting what they think they need, and you have to turn that around to be their ally and you have to be seen as their ally and you have to really use all of the tricks that we have learned through all our years of experience to show that patient your compassion and that you are there for them even though you're going in a direction that's different than what they would have expected. 
While having these difficult conversations with patients, it is important to remember what circumstances would warrant a referral to a behavioral health expert. Co-occurring mental health disorders related to trauma, depression, and anxiety may require a shift in treatment modalities or a specialty care referral. A strong partnership with behavioral health experts is essential to managing these patients. Make appropriate referrals for PTSD after giving a primary care PTSD screen, depression or anxiety after giving a PHQ-4 questionnaire, other psychiatric disorders, or significant spiritual issues. If ongoing traumatic events are a part of the patient's life, it is critical that the primary care practitioner discern whether the patient needs an immediate referral for social work or mental health services. Acknowledge the difficulty in seeking help when the trauma has not stopped and determine if reporting is legally mandated. If it is, develop a plan with the patient to file the report in a way that increases the safety of the patient and their loved ones. When patients are exhibiting active addiction behaviors such as use of illicit drugs like heroin, an immediate cessation of prescribing opioids may be indicated and accompanied by a substance use disorder assessment referral. A list of substance use disorder assessment providers may be found on the Division of Behavioral Health website. Individuals whose lives have revolved around opioids for decades may have significant and legitimate concerns about dose reduction. These individuals need patience and behavioral support. Be sure to ask about suicidal thoughts and provide referrals to counseling when needed. If you have concern that a patient may have a drug misuse issue, the Provider Substance Misuse Quick Reference Sheet may be a helpful resource for brief screenings provider talking points, and referral options. Additionally, the National Institute on Drug Abuse is a good resource to start a conversation about your patient's drug use and offer scenarios to address patient resistance. This concludes this presentation on having difficult conversations with patients. A reminder that the full Nebraska Pain Management Guidance document can be downloaded on the Nebraska Health and Human Services website by searching Pain Management. If you would like to receive free continuing education credit, return to the Pain Guidance website education page and select the type of continuing education credit you would like to receive. Credit can be earned for both physicians and pharmacists.